don't know that anybody really deserves to be lied about. Like, why would you lie about a person? Well, because they're evil and they're terrible. Well, then why not just tell the truth about them? I one time told a person that, my goodness, to destroy my reputation, I was going to have to lie about me. If I'm going to destroy your reputation, all I have to do is tell the truth. To tell you that maybe the person isn't as bad as you think that they are. And so maybe the problem is not with that other person. Maybe the problem is with us. Now, it might be with the other person, and then it gets frustrating maybe because, um, like, well, maybe a person in our friend group will do something terrible, and then we'll tell people they did this, and other people will kind of shrug their shoulders and not think it's such a big deal. And maybe that's why we'll lie, because we want that person to, to get shunned or to get into trouble. Try to get them what we think they deserve, not to expose them for who they are. But again, there's an issue there. If you're in a friend group and somebody does something that really bothers you and it doesn't bother anybody else, maybe the problem is with you, maybe you expect too much out of people, or maybe the problem is with the friend group. And now you have to ask yourself, wait a second, do I want to be with a bunch of people who this doesn't bother? If you're in a friend group, let's say, and somebody sped, uh, says some terrible things about you, spread some lies about you, and then you go to your friends and say, they, they spread these lies about me. And then, the, and then everyone in the group is like, that's terrible, you shouldn't have done that. So, <laughs> you guys gonna talk to that person? No, nah, that's between you guys. What you have to recognize is that your friend group, no matter how tough they seem, they're a bunch of cowards. They're not willing to stand up for what's right. They're willing to do what's expedient, rather than later on, because that will definitely lead to way more hatred. Not just for them, but for yourself as well. You'll be angry with yourself. How do I stick up for them so much and they don't stand up for me? That's the part that's gonna really make you angry. That's gonna make forgiveness very, very difficult. Does it make it, it makes it very difficult, probably on both ends of that, to form to form friendships. In other words, it's difficult for you as the person who hates the other person but, but speaks well of them in front of their face but then stabs them in the back. Because if, if you're doing that, you've got to presume that other people are doing it too. In other words, you're doing it because you think it's normal. And then everybody else there hears you doing it, and of course, the really good question to ask, if you hear one person talking badly about somebody else behind their back, what do you think they're doing about you? Yeah, probably the same. And we can, we can lie and say, well, yeah, but there's, there's nothing about me that's, that's worth talking about behind my back. But it's like when I hear sometimes you guys will talk about other teachers and how terrible they are, and I think, man, what do you guys say about me in other teachers' classes? I actually know. I get to hear it. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, I guess, like, her emotions when she, like, got it, like, to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you set a boundary with, like, like one thing, maybe. You say, hey, everything's going with just this one thing. And you can almost be guaranteed that's the one thing that people are going to violate. You know? It's like we've got, like in this class, we have two rules, right? Don't put your head down. And how often does that get violated? <laughs> He's not here today. Um, and also, don't have AirPods in while I'm talking to you. I hear about I'm talking to you. And those are the two, and everything else is fine, whatever. And those things get violated consistently. I don't know that so much about, the, about how many rules you have. Um, well, maybe it is. But we just have the assumption that rules are going to get violated, whether you have one or a hundred. It's just a matter of how many. But yeah, when you set those boundaries and that person finds the one way to, to violate it, you know, that you kind of get the sense that that's just a person who's going to violate boundaries, no matter how many you put. Some people won't ever violate them. Some people will violate them every single time. And you kind of get a sense of who's who. Yeah. Huh. Okay. <clears throat> Especially with regards to when you're when you're angry with somebody, that's when it's really hard to keep your own boundaries. Like a lot of our a lot of our ethics come with an asterisk next to them. Like you know we should you know we never lie, don't ever lie, um, except when you know we should never talk badly about somebody uh, except when. In other words, we make exceptions to these things. And hatred is probably the fastest avenue to making exceptions to, how, to, to our, our, our values. It makes us wonder if they're really values or if they're just conveniences. Because if you, the, the purpose of a value is to maintain it even in the difficult times. A value is something that's supposed to guide you, especially in the difficult times. You should never lie about people. But what if they really deserve it? Um, I don't know that anybody really deserves to be lied about. Like, why would you lie about a person? Well, because they're evil and they're terrible. 
Well, then why not just tell the truth about them? Why do you have to lie about them? I one time told a person that, my goodness, to destroy my reputation, you have to lie to me. I said, you have to lie about me. If I'm going to destroy your reputation, all I have to do is tell the truth. And if a person really is that bad, why not just tell the truth about them? Why do you have to make up extra stuff? It should tell you that maybe the person isn't as bad as you think that they are. And so maybe the problem is not with that other person. Maybe the problem is with us. Now, it might be with the other person, and then it gets frustrating maybe because, um, like, well, maybe a, a person in our friend group will do something terrible, and then we'll tell people they did this, and other people will kind of shrug their shoulders and not think it's such a big deal. And maybe that's why we'll lie, because we want that person to, to get shunned or to get into trouble. So we lie about it just to, to try to get them not to try to get them what we think they deserve, not to expose them for who they are. But again, there's an issue there. If you're in a friend group and somebody does something that really bothers you and it doesn't bother anybody else, maybe the problem is with you. Maybe you expect too much out of people. Or maybe the problem is with the friend group. And now you have to ask yourself, wait a second, do I want to be with a bunch of people who this doesn't bother? You know, like for example, if somebody if you're in a friend group, let's say, and somebody sped, uh, says some terrible things about you, spreads some lies about you, and then you go to your friends and say, they, they spread these lies about me. And then, the, and then everyone in the group is like, that's terrible. Shouldn't have done that. So, you guys going to talk to that person? No, nah, that's between you guys. Well, uh, do you really want to be in a friend group with people who say things like that? Well, that's just between you guys. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe what, you recognize, maybe what you have to recognize is that your friend group, no matter how tough they seem, they're a bunch of cowards. They're a bunch of cowards. They can, they're not willing to stand up for what's right. They're willing to do what's expedient. And of course, that's, that can be problematic. And so, you know, when you hate somebody, it's a feeling. <clears throat> and he's pointing out it's a, it's a feeling. It isn't anything that we, that we necessarily think. It's, a, it's an emotion that overcomes us. And hatred has a way of, of absolutely coming out of nowhere. And it leads to this extinction of values. It leads to the destruction of whatever value systems we think we have in place. Um, given an, enough hatred, I imagine that most people will, will violate nearly every value that they have. And so we have to maybe guard ourselves against hatred. Good luck. Yeah. Let me know how that goes. Because that's a really difficult thing to do. Because it just overwhelms you. It's like trying to stand up against a, against a wave in the ocean. You ever try going up and standing up against a wave that's, that's bigger than you, over your head? I can tell you, it doesn't work very well. I don't care what kind of board you're holding on to. And so, now we've got to figure out a way to, to, to get over hatred. Once again, good luck. You ever been so angry with somebody, and you, and you, in your head you're like, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go, even though they're a miserable piece of crap who deserves, let it go. It's hard, man. It's hard. Especially when someone has done something really awful. You know? And what's even worse is not when they do something awful to you. What's worse than that? When they do something awful about someone you care about. They, they harm a friend of yours. They harm someone you love. Then it's, I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, I had a, a friend one time who was really pacifist for a while, until she joined the army, strangely enough. But she was a pacifist, meaning that she didn't believe in, in ever any kind of fighting or... She, she, fighting was never the answer, war was never the answer. So it's a strange thing that she joins the army. Anyway, um, she once said to me that if she was ever to be murdered, she would say, I don't want the person to get the death penalty. I want you to forgive that person. I was like, really? You want that person to just walk? She says, yeah, putting them in prison wouldn't do any good. I want them to, to be set free and that way they can can I become a better person? <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Certainly, if, you're, if you are dead, I will make sure that nobody ever pays for your, for your murder. And of course, if she was, we, you, you'd find a way to make someone pay for it. And it's hard to let go of those things. It's much easier to let go of the wrongs done against us than it is to, to let go of the wrongs that are done against, against our loved ones. So maybe that goes back to the thing about the friend group. If, if you're with a group of friends, and one person is, is saying very negative, is, is uh, saying some very bad things about you, and nobody else is willing to stand up for you, maybe it's the case that they don't really love you. Maybe it's the case that they're not really friends. Because all of us who have a, a real friendship know that it would be the hardest thing in the world to not get retribution on behalf of a friend. 
to not defend our friends. So maybe if it's easier for them to not defend you, maybe they're really not friends in the first place. And that sucks. Because how much time do we invest maybe in people who turn out to not be friends? But you know what? Better to find out now than when something really bad happens and you really need people behind, behind you. It's better to have two or three people behind you. And that's, that's if you're tight enough, man, that could be a tribe. That could be a tribe. I'm thinking back to a friend of mine one time who saved my life. Literally. His name was uh, Ari Rubin. I say it was because he, he no longer is and is. He, he died a few years ago. And um, he was a, uh, I don't know how to say it, a community activist. I'll say that. And I was with him at a, at a protest one time. <clears throat> and we were protesting against a protest. He was, um, long story short, he was part of a, of a Jewish group in, in Pasadena. And there was a group of, of Nazis, neo-Nazis rallying. And I mean like the real neo-Nazis. Not the people on, on, on Twitter who say they don't like your opinion, but like actual real Nazis. And we got into a scuffle with a bunch of them. And Ari was, he was a big Jew, man. He was a big dude about this big. And um, long story short, we, were, we got into a scuffle with these guys. And, and I saw a video of a dude was running up behind me to hit me in the back of the head with this big old piece of wood, man. And just as he, as he raises up his arms to hit me, Ari just cut straight through the guy with a right cross and just, I think he killed the guy right there in the street. I mean, it was like perfect like motion where the guy was coming forward and Ari was going forward and ran through him and the guy's legs actually came up above his head as he hit the ground. He hit his head on the concrete and the guy was like convulsing and, and doing all that. It's okay, he deserved it. <laughs> and I look at a guy like that, I think, I am so glad that Ari had my back at that moment and didn't sit there like, well, that's between y'all. <laughs> You know, it's, those are good friends to have. And so, maybe it's better to find out under circumstances like that, rather than later on, because that will definitely lead to way more hatred, man. And not just for them, but for yourself as well. You'll be angry with yourself. How did I let this go on for so long? How did I, how did I let them, you know, be my friend? How did I stick up for them so much and they don't stand up for me? That's the part that's going to really make you angry. And it's going to make... That's going to make forgiveness very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, issues? to accomplish with forgiveness? Change. Change. What kind of change? Mm, depends on what the person did. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> can, we can we forgive Hitler? Mm -hmm. I guess not Hitler. Okay. <laughs> Stalin. <laughs> How far back do we have to go? Hitler is just, is just such an interesting case to me because my grandfather was in Auschwitz. And so I, I think back to that. You know, you've heard those stories about when they got off the trains, they were told to go left or right, left or right. And if they went one direction, they were killed. If they went to the other side, they were, they were kept alive. I think about that. My grandfather was, was going through Auschwitz. And I don't know that it was Mangala because there were three different doctors there. But I was imagine it being Mangala, who if he had just sent him to the other direction, completely capriciously, then I wouldn't be here right now, for better or worse. And you know what the weird thing is, also? If I wasn't here... I wonder if anybody else wouldn't be here either. You know what I mean? Like somehow, some way, like 10 years ago, I touched a life in some way, like I cut somebody off in traffic or whatever, and then that person got delayed, and then they ended up meeting like somebody, and then they had a baby, and then that turned out to be like you, or like your parents in some way, and then fast forward now like 20 years, or 10, or 10 years, 20 years, now here you are right here in front of us. It's like one little tiny thing that we're interconnected in, but anyway, I'm putting off having to answer that question. What's the worst thing you could imagine forgiving somebody for? Mm. Right? Killing someone. Killing someone. Could you forgive someone for killing somebody in your family? Mm. I could forgive someone for killing my brother. I may even fill up their commissary every week if they did it. That's a joke. <laughs> okay, never mind. No more dead brother <laughs> jokes. <laughs> 
Could you forgive somebody for killing, um, I don't know, one of your friends, if not your family members? I don't know. What if the person's really sorry about it? <laughs> I don't know. It's hard. How many, t how many chances should a person get? Pause. It was funny. I asked my 12th grade classes that question, and as soon as I asked that question, people were saying three, one, <laughs> two. People had, they had numbers ready to go. There's this, uh, this, this old fairy tale. You heard the story of the snake, uh, snake who finally shed his skin? Sorry, snake who shed his skin for good? You heard that one? It's about a snake. So it's a well-titled story. And the snake um, is an evil snake because all snakes are evil. So he, uh, he, but the thing about snake is that snake actually enjoys evil. He goes around and like steals eggs and seeds. And he does all the worst stuff. And all the animals in the creature kingdom, they all, you know, they're all watching out for him. They're all afraid of him. Not because they think he's going to kill him, but because they know he's going to steal stuff. So whenever they would see it, the little, you know, trail in the grass or on the dirt, they would always go check their belongings because they knew that snake was somewhere nearby. And snake loved stealing. So he just enjoyed being evil. So one day snake was out in the, was out in the grasslands. And he was hiding behind a log because he was waiting for, trying to find something he could steal. And he hears some voices of some, of some creatures going by. It turns out that there are mongooses. Mongooses, if you don't know, those are the natural enemies of snakes. Snakes are the natural enemies of mongooses. So he's hiding behind a log, and he hears them talking. And one of the mongooses is a, is a teacher. It turns out they're, they're, they're students at the local mongoose school. And they're asking this question, is evil something that you are, or is evil something that you do? And that's something for you to ponder at some point in your life. And so they ask, um, so he, one of the students is saying, well, it's something that you are. And they say, for example, snake. Snake is just evil through and through. There's nothing that can be done to redeem, to redeem him. So then the, the teacher asks the question, well, is there any way that, like, even just like theoretically, that like, he couldn't be evil? Like, what if he stopped doing evil? Would he still be evil? And they're like, yeah, but he couldn't stop doing evil. So he presses the question, but what if he did stop doing evil? Would he then be evil? And... Someone said, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just unimaginable. And so the teacher says, if snake stops doing evil, then st snake stops being evil. If snake starts doing good, then snake starts being good. And they thought, huh. So this, uh, as the story goes, the, that kind of uh, got into the snake's head because it had never occurred to him before. He could be good. Since the day he was born, he always heard about how evil he was. So he was just kind of doing what he thought was his nature, what was expected of him. So then he thought, huh, I want to find out, is it possible for me to, to, to change? Because up until that point, he used to always promise people, oh, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. He would shed his skin and say, look, I'm new again. But every time he shed his skin, he went back to being who he was. So the next day, he goes and he breaks into the school, the mongoose school, and he wants to go meet this teacher. And he ends up coming across the teacher finally, and, he, and he, the mongooses find out that he's nearby because they see the, you know, the slithering in the, in, the, in the grass and the dirt. And finally, he's able to find the teacher. And he asks the teacher, is it true that I can actually shed my skin? And then they, all the mongooses, they, they rush in there, and they're going to they're gonna, you know, throw him out of the school and beat him up. And then they, the mongoose teacher stops them and says, no, 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 don't throw him out. He's here to learn. And they're like, yeah, but he can't learn. He's a you know, he's snake. He can never be, be different. And so the mongoose points it out and says to one of the other mongooses, remember when you first came here? You were my worst student, weren't you? And he's like, yeah, well, you changed. You stopped doing the things that made you a terrible student, and you started doing the things that made you a good student. And he kind of goes one by one with, with the mongooses, reminding them about who they used to be. And he reminds them that who you used to be is only that. It's only who you used to be. It's not who you presently are, and it certainly, hopefully, isn't who you're going to be in the future. And so he points out and says, if Snake changes, if he actually does shed his skin for good, then he's going to be, then he'll actually be good from now on. He'll be a good person or a good snake with a, with a bad past. And so Snake is kind of motivated by this because he never, never occurred to him he could be more. And so later on in the story, he actually does shed his skin. He becomes a, um, a teacher at the school, and the students there like him because even though they're all mongooses and he's a snake, he's able to show this, you know, kind of live out this transition from being one thing to the other. So in the story, the, the teacher asks the mongoose, is how many chances did you deserve? How many chances did you deserve? How many chances do you deserve? And the answer to the question seems to be, as many as you're necessary. How many chances do you need? As many as you need. If, in fact, you're getting better. Because the story does point out, Snake is not perfect after that. He does 
do some stupid stuff. He does stumble again, but overall, in, in, in the long run, he, bec he becomes good. He's way better than when he started. Imagine if, if today you have an F in my class, and you say, Scanlon, how can I be better? I stop you and go, you're not, no, I'm not letting you. No, no late work, nothing. You're done. What are you ever going to be except for what you presently are? What's my goal in this class? Is my goal in this class to, to help you get better or to help you become what you want to become? Well, then how many chances do you need? I'm going to say, how many chances do you deserve? Probably none. But how many chances should, uh, should you get? As many as you need, if you're actually going in the right direction. Some people, some of you guys, you're already in the right direction. You don't need another chance. Some of you guys need 10 chances. Some of you guys need one chance. Then if you guys are like me, you need like 150 to 200 chances. But if, if, if you're actually going to get there, I just, I don't know. That's why it's a hard question to answer. How, how much do we forgive a person? Because if, we're, if the goal of our forgiveness is to, is to help people become better, I don't know, I'd hate to, to think that I'm the person who, who shut them off right where they are and guaranteed that they would never be more than what they presently are. I don't know. It's like one of the reasons I hate grading stuff in this class, because for you guys, whether or not you, know, uh, you guys get to go to college or not is heavily dependent on the grades you get in this class. This is one of those core classes. I'd hate to think I kept any of you out of Harvard. I'd hate to think I kept any of you out of a dream school. And, and I know people will say, Scala, you didn't keep anybody out of anywhere. You give them opportunities, and they choose to do it or not. Yeah, but I still feel guilty <laughs> when you do badly. Because I... Because from my perspective, I know what that means in the long run. Even if you don't, I know what it means in the long run. And so, I don't know. How many chances do we give someone, for, how many times do we forgive a person? How many chances should we give them? Maybe as many as they need. And what I mean is that there's a goal in mind. If the goal is to become better, and if you're becoming better, maybe as many as you need to get pushed into that direction. Some people don't want to be better. For a long time, Snake didn't want to shed his skin. And so how many chances should he have gotten? Probably none, until he made the decision to shed his skin for good. And then maybe as many as he needed. And so, I don't know. Murder's a big deal, though. You know? If someone stole my cat, it'd be a big deal. I don't know. Other questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?